Remember, the Messenger وسلم, speaks to symptoms and outcomes so that we can be more introspective about qualities and attitudes and traits that we might have. Abdullah ibn Umar anhuma, he reports that the Prophet وسلم, said an authentic hadith, from the worst of sins to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet وسلم, would not share with us these traits if they weren't significant. When he says, Min a'lam al dhunub from the worst of sins, the most heinous of sins in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who marries a woman, and then once he gets what he wants out of her, once he gets what he wants out of her, and he already realizes he got what he wanted out of her, then he immediately leaves her, and then he doesn't even fulfill her mahr. Because he no longer has anything to gain from her. He had his fun, that was it, it was over. A person who gets into a relationship and then speeds up everything and becomes intimate and then once he's done having fun, sends a text message, I'm done. What? You just entered into someone's life and went that far and then a text message, I'm done. I'm seeing it more and more and more. You know, that's it. No longer of any use, no longer of any benefit. When people who have shared a significant amount of life together, husband and a wife, don't forget the good times between you. And suddenly you're trying to destroy that person because they no longer are an asset to you in every single way. Because you're no longer benefiting from that person. They're no longer of use to you. What are we, insurance companies? What's happening here? It's low, it's not manly, it's not womanly, it's not Muslimy, it's not human even. It's just not honorable. And the Prophet is saying, this attitude is a problematic attitude. And it's always important when the Prophet ﷺ gives multiple examples because you can find the, the, the common denominator. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَرَجُلٌ اسْتَعْمَلَ رَجُلًا فَذَهَبَ بِأُجْرَتِهِ A person who employs someone, you know, gets everything out of that person, works them hard, takes their best years, takes their best talent, makes them all sorts of promises, and then once the job is done, they're not answering the phone anymore. It's low, very low, right? You, you got what you wanted out of the person, you got, they got the job done for you, MashaAllah, they could find you in a second and you could find them in a second when you needed them. Now that they've done what you wanted them to do for you, suddenly they can't get an answer out of you. Suddenly you start to dodge them. Suddenly you, suddenly you start to delay the payment. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your money, dear brothers and sisters. It's the tongue and the money that's gonna mess a lot of people up on the Day of Judgment. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the way that you deal with people. You know, the opposite of that, the Prophet I'm saying, pay a man before his sweat even dries. But we see it all the time in smaller capacities, right? You just disappear from someone when you no longer have a financial benefit from them. They can't find you anymore. It's low. It's not from the character of a Muslim. It's not from the character of an honorable person. It's not, from the, it's not befitting to a believer. It's a great sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ even connected it to how we would deal with the environment around us, with animals. Prophet ﷺ said, someone who kills animals for fun. Yeah, we have that in our deen too. Allah did not leave anything around us except that He assigned rights to it. Because if you disregard human beings, then you're going to disregard animals, you're going to disregard your environment as well. Isn't that what we're witnessing right now? in this radical individualism, that we're, we have no problem harming everyone and everything around us because, at least in my circle, I'm not seeing the immediate harm. So I'm gonna use as much of it as I can. SubhanAllah, imagine, if the Prophet wasallam says that a person who harms an animal for fun, what then of a person who harms a human being for fun? What then of a person who actually starts to hurt people's, you know, in their livelihoods? in their reputation, in their, in their ird, and even in, their, in, in their, their very being, for fun, to get a kick out of it. If this is the, the crime in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for an animal, if an animal shows up on the Day of Judgment, complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about their rights. You know, subhanAllah, there was one brother who alhamdulillah had embraced Islam uh, after this past Ramadan. And he said it was the Judgment Day uh, series where we're talking about Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And I'm sitting here thinking he's gonna talk about, you know, this time of standing before Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and how that meant something to him. And, you know, uh, how he thought about his salah and his prayer. I'm thinking something grand. 
And he said, no, it was actually this part where you talked about a bird showing up on the Day of Judgment and saying, Ya Allah, qatalani abathan. He killed me for no reason. He had no right to kill me. He killed me for absolutely no reason. And he said, while I was watching that, this bird landed right on my windowsill and stared at me. And I said, khalas, that's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending me a message. But if the deen even assigned rights to that, what about your human being? What about your brother or sister in Islam? You don't just use people and then dispose of them. And in a world of consumerism, people become just as disposable as products. And when the Prophet ﷺ got back to Mecca, and the Ansar fought, naturally, the man is home. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, we served him, we gave him what he needed, right? Maybe he misses home. Maybe he's going to come back to Mecca now, the place of the Kaaba. And the Prophet ﷺ gathers the Ansar and says to them, that not only am I coming back with you, but if the Ansar took a valley and everybody else took a valley a direction, I would go where the Ansar would go. If I could be an Ansari, I would be an Ansari. I am with you for the rest of my existence. Beautiful, didn't forget them. He could have sent them back home and said, Jazakumullahu khaira. And they may have understood. He's back home now and he's in Mecca where it all started. But no, I'm gonna be with the Ansar forever now. That's our messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's his individual shukur and how he didn't use you when he needed you and then disappear when he no longer needed you. Always, his heart was with you, his thoughts, his even if you didn't mention your favors to him, the Prophet Sallallahu will mention your favors and remind you of what you did for him when no one else was there for him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now there's a community dynamic to this too. The solution, dear brothers and sisters, is you frequently, on an individual level, frequently remember the people who are there for you and reach out to them and thank you. Number two, visit people and check in on them with no agenda whatsoever. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned a man who went out to visit another man for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah sent him an angel. And the angel came to him and said to him, where are you going? He said, I'm going to visit this brother of mine. The angel responds with what? What's the ulterior motive? Do you owe him something? Does he owe you something? Are you going there like salam? Just want to say salam? No, you don't just want to say salam. Is there something underneath that visit? He said, لا غير أني أحببته لله. He said, no, no, I just love him for Allah. Then he said, no, that Allah sent me to tell you that he loves you as you loved your brother. Number three, don't throw away long-term relationships because of short-term ruptures. Number four, accustom yourself to charity with no benefits. لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا to giving to people without wanting anything in return from them. Number five, as a community, we take care of our elders who gave us so much and we do better to make sure our volunteers don't burn out.